you cool cats and space cowboys. It's time for Cosmic Tea with your host, Avalon Starlight. All right, everybody, I am probably super jazzed about this conversation, which I say every week, but this one is exceptionally super jazzing because the human that I get to interview today is one of my best friends. <laughs> like, she's somebody that I connect with every week, and gratefully so, because what we're going to be talking about today can kind of correlate into having these people in these spaces and these places where you can go to nurture what, what our conversation is, a, is about. And so I'm so freaking excited to introduce you to Jenna Smith, who is like one of the most spiritually, how do I put this into words? Uh, she is the human that I would go to to support you in managing how to be the most highest potential human that you can possibly be by managing your emotions, by stepping up into your highest self so that you can show up in the world in the greatest service that you possibly can. Like she is here to support you in becoming your version of you that you have always known lived inside of you but are ready to step into at this time she's not only that cool but she sings like nobody's business as well so like she's got a voice on her too like she is here to tune humans to their highest vibration oh my god jenna i'm so excited that we get to have this conversation today thank you thank you thank you for coming here yay <laughs> i love that intro Ooh. well it's kind of your jam it is my jam. I like it. And it's like, it's who people are. And so that's what frustrates them. I think I wrote this down the other day. I think people's most core pain is the pain of not being who they really are. They might not know that's it. It's an itch they can't scratch, but it's like this desire to be your truest expression. And then the, the wanting of doing all the things to try to get to their fullest expression. Um, but just that desire to be like, I am here to do this. So let's start with that, right? Like, let's let's just go right into the nitty gritty because I think we can all, and everybody listening can kind of get into that sensation or feeling like, oh my God, I know that I'm here to X, Y, Z. Like there's something bigger that I'm meant to do or I'm to be on stage just to write a book or to, you know, help people and all that kind of stuff. So there's like this, here I am now, but this is this version of me. Like, what do you think is the... Um, the impasse between that or or what is the the obstacle that prevents them from having that in the moment because they're going to see it as an obstacle I get that it's not necessary. no yeah well we got to speak to like where we both been like yeah. I was a self-development junkie chaser of all the things that will get me to where I should be or who I think I should be and once I get there then mm -hmm. that's yeah. it's just a big old illusion <laughs> it's just it's just not true if I do this then isn't your fullest expression coming into being because it's it's transactional uh it requires you to become something in order to be who you are nope you have to I call it turning up the lantern like you have to actually turn up your lantern so the stuff that isn't you falls away so it's a paradigm shift I love that and I want you to just give me more but what yeah, that because yeah. that feels warm in my body so nice but it, I can also see how listeners would be like uh, like what <laughs> what <laughs> where well where's the lantern turner upper <laughs> like you know like where huh, huh? where's the gas line um it's just this like paradigm shift of um our society has this idea of like if you do this you get that which in, oftentimes is true you you work at this job and then you get the paycheck <clears throat> when it comes to being you on the planet it's like you're already you it's already done and from that wholeness the next steps to it to your fullest expression becoming even more and even more and even more but you but you can't get there from i'm not it so i'm gonna beat myself with a stick like self-abusive thoughts, um, I'm not there, I'm not enough, I need to do this, I don't have enough, is all societal jibber-jabber. Like, it's 
true in some cases. I have a job, I get the thing. I go to school, I get the degree. When it comes to your fullest soul expression, that won't work. That and won't I, work. Yeah, I love that because I, I see it in my work and I'm sure you do as well as it showing up with, oh, I need to get the certification or I need more education or I need to have, you know, uh, the right people or I, I, I need to have more money, more time, more of all of these things in order to be me. And as soon as you're like a scrambly squirrel, you know, you're on the wrong path. I love that. <laughs> if that's who's... For those watching the video, that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Scrambly squirrel. Yeah. Uh, it, it, as soon as, like, this is this is where some of the tools we're going to talk about are going to come in, and, like, knowing how to listen to your body, but, like, really... Well, and I was going to say that, I was going to touch base on that, right? Because the way that it presents to me as an energy worker is that the people energetically are not embodied. Their energy is above their body, right? So the way that I, I explain it when I'm with them is that like they're a helium balloon just sitting above and we want to pull them into their body so that they can be present because nothing is figure outable and nothing has a solution when you're not in your body. But when you're in your body, that's where there's gunk that's where there's emotion that's where like uh it could present i just give examples and then i'd love to hear this from your perspective as well like if you've battled illness or disease your body may not be your friend right like you might be angry with your body if you have trauma from your childhood and and so there's emotion that you don't want to tap into that feels big and that feels heavy why would you want to be in your body? Uh, if you are in spirit, like I love spiritually inclined people. This is what this podcast is about. Y'all want to go up into the cosmos and make friends with other dimensions. I'm with you. However, that's not where you live. <laughs> we live on earth. This is a third dimensional, very reality based life force energy here. And so we have to choose to be here in order to begin to actually move through this. So I would love your perspective on being um, embodied. Yeah. And, um, yeah, let me just say also, <laughs> I was in a car accident when I was 15 and suffered from chronic pain and had fibromyalgia and sleep disorders. Um, then I gained a ton of weight. Cause if I was working out when the insurance people were like spying on me, I wouldn't actually get the money for the chronic pain that I was in. So I had to be in this body prison of like not being able to be vital, not being able to really heal. And then that's the societal system, right? Of like punitive and show us you're broken. Um, when I was 15 and that led me to Reiki because I was like, there's gotta be another way. And that was the breadcrumb then. And my family is like all sorts of trauma. <laughs> I won't get into it. All sorts of trauma, all sorts of not want to be here things. So I <laughs> Like I'll share, like, I'm not like Mary Poppins coming up in here. I am part Disney princess. I mean, I'm not going to lie, but like, it's for real, <laughs> but I had to go through the stuff to come out the other side as realizing, oh, wait, I, this was, I was here all along. I was never broken. So the, how to be in your body, I would say first, like if you're listening just start. All of me is here now. Clunk, like plunk down. Plunk. <laughs> you're energetic people and you're on Avalon Starlight podcast. Just plunk down. Just gear shift down. Look out your eyes. Look at the little holes in your head. Check it out. See how you feel. Like I would journal on that. Like, how does it feel to plunk down? Woo! I want to get out. Okay. Or it feels heavy. Just should I feel heavy? Is heavy bad? Maybe I should feel light and airy. Like just let the sensations guide you. So the whole thing, um, around my kind of work is, is tuning into your resources. So your body is your most significant, one of your most significant resources. I was like, okay, they're all really big. Your heart is a big resource. Your spirit is a big resource and you manage your mind, but the body resource requires experiencing sensations as they arise be here now. All of me is here now. I got that cue from an acting class. So when you're speaking or singing, if you're not present, you're not charismatic. You're, there's, you're not like people are just going to check their phones, right? Like you're just not there. So <clears throat> presence is being here in your body. 
physical sensations here now with curiosity. So not this means this, oh my God, it's bad. Like, so as soon as your head starts to go spinny, that's where you have to manage that. That's the helium balloon. I'm like, nope, just, just breathe. Oh, but I have to eat bananas. No. And you're just kind of gentle. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so your body's also a mammal. You are a mammal. You're a human being. You're a mammal. So you could just even like, just touch your own head. <laughs> just be like, it's okay. We're okay. Because we like, we, we will calm when we soothe ourselves physically. Um, so that, yeah, that just come into your body, check it out and see how you're doing with that. I'd start there. I love that. Um, one of the practices I use and, and for myself is to actually have a conversation with my body. If I'm having a hard right. time with the sensations, right? Like if I'm like, oh, I don't really know how my body is feeling right now. And this feels like hard to like, I'll, I'll ask it instead. So it feels more like it's a, it's a call answer. Like, Hey body, how are you today? I'm sad. And that's where you got to be really present because that sadness, right? Like, instead of going like, well, I don't, fuck, I don't want to be sad today. I'm not having this conversation then, right? Like to be like more gentle and compassionate to say like, oh, I'm sorry, you're sad. Like what's making you sad? And for personally, for me, I find that it's this, this communion that I'm choosing to be in relationship with my body versus just like, it is this thing that's attached to my consciousness that you have to drag around and feed and exercise and take it for walks and kind of have to sleep like sometimes it could just feel like this burdensome thing <clears throat> versus <laughs> one of your most significant guides so if you're all into guides and Ooh, I want to talk to my guides well freaking talk to your body your body is like on the phone with all your guides <laughs> like it has <laughs> all the down low on everything you could possibly need to know right now I just had this vision of the body and your guides gossiping behind your bag. Like, oh my she's God, what is she doing now? Like, is she serious? seriously, she's calling that ex again, isn't she? Oh my God. <laughs> Put down the cookie. No, no, no. I think that's no. the best. Image. But it loves you anyways. Like it's a gold, it's the golden retriever of guides. Like, it's just like, oh, you're continuously abusing me and calling me fat, dumb, blah, blah, blah. Like people just abuse themselves and think that that's going to get them progress. You can stop that. Treat it well, listen to it. Okay. So you said something that I want to talk about because I have an inner critic that can be a real asshole, right? Yeah. Like my inner critic is, is mean girl done 10 when, when I, I mean, and I'll say this for truth, right? Like it tends to kick up if I'm tired, if yeah. I, you know what I mean? Like if my management tools that I have for myself aren't as easily accessible for me. So the soon as I have a little show of weakness, my main girl and her critic is like, bitch, I got something to say to you. You thought you were yeah. doing well? You thought this yeah. was happening? You thought your body looked good? Let me, let me tell you a story, mm -hmm. right? So you were talking about this. So then my next question would be, um, your inner voice, your inner critics, you're like, Shh, it's okay. But that, that feels hard sometimes to, to soften or manage or yeah take mean, mean conversations about yourself and make them, how yep. would, how do you guide your, your clients? How do you support them in that conversation with their inner critic? Yeah, no, it's just, it's just a great question. Um, and yeah, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Um, so you have to be careful of hungry, angry, lonely, tired. If you're those things, you're under-resourced. That is not when you plan your life. And that is not when you look in the mirror and a new pair of pants, that's just like, <clears throat> just, just alter. <laughs> The things you're going to do. I'm angry, angry, lonely, mentally remembering that. So, oh, <laughs> so it's a, it's a recovery term in Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcol like and ACOA. So oh. halt. Oh, like halt. stop, slow down. Don't make any angry. sudden moves. Oh. There's my don't, takeaway. Don't buy something with your credit card. Don't call that person. Don't text that. Like just, just reel it in. Cause you're going to do something all all reactive um what was the question before a uh, critic yeah my critic is scathing um <clears throat> the bigger your potential the bigger your critic by the way 
so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> it's like, oh, she's back. Okay. That means I'm moving forward. Um, so use it as use the voice. First of all, just realize that it's not you and it's not what's going to get you where you need to go. That's it's lie to you. You need me. I'm going to get you all the things. No, you're going to erode everything. So the voices in my head are saying is an exercise I use with clients. So get it script down. Does it hit you at your weight? Does it hit you at, um, men don't like you. Does it hit you at, it's very like grade six playgrounds. <laughs> like, you know what I totally, mean? Totally. Your mom's an idiot and you're an idiot. Like, it's just like, where does shame get inflamed for you? And shame is the belief that you're inherently worthless. It sucks. It's the, the feeling we all will go squirrely to get out of. The best thing about shame, by the way, is that it, it can't thrive in the light. So when you can be in your body and feel it, even though you don't want to feel it, it's losing its grip already. And that like probably might need some therapy and <laughs> some hand holding in the beginning because it's it's no joke. But the critic is coming from shames, like it's like it's like coming from there. Um, the so use it as a guide of wow, I must be making progress. Oh, that voice is getting really strong. I must be making progress. Like that. Not listen to it. <laughs> well, and I think that takes a level of spiritual awareness to separate yeah. yourself. First, first step is like separating from yourself. First step is what do the voices in my head say when I'm hungry, angry, lonely, tired? Yeah. Like, what is the record player? So yeah. write all that down. I do find that it's it's the same, right? Like it, it has the same. The, it has the same ammunition. It likes to it's use the same. the same. Like yours would be different than mine. Than everybody yes. listening it is directed specifically to us. Yeah. Um, so I love that the idea first is like to just even see it as a separate part of you, not that you are what you are hearing, but that it is it is a voice that lives inside you as you're saying that comes from shame. Now I'm going to, I'm going to ask this question because I think I'm having it. And so I think somebody else may have it because somebody might go like, well, is that your ego? Because to me, they feel a little different. Like they feel. Mm. Yep. Because when we started this call, we were like, oh, okay. How do you manage your humanness? So there are parts of your, your actual personality within you, part of the matrix that matrix that makes you your personality that's different than like the entity of the ego the whole like puffing upness and taking everything personally and it's 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 tricky because we get used to these terminologies and so the differentiation i think you're feeling is like what well, it's it came from me though like it has your dna on it so it's just like slightly different than like ego like ego with a big E that Eckhart Tolle talks about a lot. <laughs> like, well, like, and then for me, like my ego, I can, I can say some kindness to my ego, which is like, it's there to pre protect me. Like I created these, these mechanisms that kept me safe when I felt unsafe as a child. Right. So anytime that I go to, you know what I mean? Like expand beyond a parameter that I have already told my ego or my ego has defined, has kept me safe. Like if it's like, oh, I'm going to contact these people about being on their podcast, or I'm going to step forward in this way. It's almost like an alarm bell goes off and the ego, it says, this is unsafe. We don't have any record or memory of you doing this or that this could go. Right. What if, what if this happens and you get treated the same way as you did by your parents. Like this could be really dangerous, right? Whereas for me, my inner critic, she's like, oh, I got your number. <laughs> yeah, it's in your, your, it's number. In your it's psyche. It's so much more personal. It's so, it, it's like, it's, it's the other side of the polarity of your potential, right? So all of the intelligence that makes you amazing is all being used to get at you. Like, oh, this one worked last time. Let's call her that name again. Like um, the like the yeah okay what exists in one spectrum has to have equal value or measure in the opposite spectrum yeah. like so the only solution is to come in the middle right presence will bust through this 
So we, we were talking about like the humanness, right? So like, I'm going to call us back to the humanness because I think that even letting yourself, because it's so challenging yeah. at times yep. to be in it, whether you're facing off with your inner critic or you like are doing something really vulnerable or you are something, somebody said something or a family member um, is hurting in, in these, these moments of like, oh, oh, oh my God, this is my life. Like this feels hard. Um, we don't always want to stay in that, like, right? Like there's not like a, oh no, this is just how I am right now. It's usually like a touch, like a touch on it and be like, well, that's mm, uh-huh. <laughs> uncomfortable. Uh-huh. What are your, is your take on being uncomfortable? Like choosing the discomfort. Okay. I, I just had a session before this, which is great because we talked about authentic emotions and reactive emotions. Okay. So an authentic emotion would be like, oh, this is really hard. I'm really scared. I don't know if I can handle this. It's, I, I use the word clean a lot too. There isn't a lot of mental noise and interpretation. And again, that's scattered. Get me out, get me out. I can't, it's too big. It's too much, blah, blah, blah. And then reactive emotions are, this is forever. This is, this, this, I, um, I'll never get out of this. I, and so it's a lot of resignation. So like reactive emotions are when we're emotionally reacting to a thought versus the actual emotion in the moment that we're feeling. So yeah. I have a question. Of course. I love <laughs> Good. Because this is it's like a complex thing. So, right. So like I'm thinking of it from the level of my brain went to Joe Dispenza, right? So okay. Uh, like the initial, cause is it true? And I'm going to ask, cause I, 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 part of me, like the original feeling, it only lasts like so many seconds. And then everything else that we expanded on is, mm-hmm. is, but the, the thought that I had there was that, you know, that reactive emotion, is it also an addiction to the chemical processes in our body, right? Like if yep. we are used to feeling the, the loneliness or the shame or the whatever that we will, like almost like amplify what we are experiencing to trigger a hormonal release to give us the same sensation in the body that tells us we're worthless, that we're no good, that we're no whatever, whatever. Emotional addiction. So that a reactive emotion would be in the realm of what Dr. Joe Dispenza speaks of the emotional addiction. So I'm used to feeling worthless. So if I'm feeling worthy, then all of the protective mechanisms in me that are of my psyche, <laughs> of your history that are dying off have a last hurrah and they're like nah, booga booga like they're just like bring out all the stops stop this person yes and and then when you can stay present and be like like it like transformations often like called going through the fiery high um fiery hallway like you start to go through it you're like ouch <laughs> Ow. And you run back. What hurts? And so discomfort when done mm, constructively is transformational. So I'm going to share something and then I want to take, bring it to you to a personal level too, right? Because we're talking about it from a very like kind of like overhead view. And, and so I want to give it some real life perspective here too. So Uh like, I will talk about it from my perspective of, I was addicted to um, narcissistic relationships Mm -hmm. uh, because that's what I grew up in. It was in my house. I felt really safe. And even when I thought that I had, I had released it, like I was sure I, I, you know what I mean? I had gone cold Turkey with my family. Like we weren't speaking. I was like, look at me. I am so strong. I have done that. Not recognizing that I was, you know, in my coaching relationships, it was like, I was still, like, I was still calling it to me. And so to give a real life example would be like in 2021 March, I finally had to stand up for myself and I had to say no to all of the relationships that even showed up for me like that. And I crash landed. We talk about crash landing in your body. And it was, it was, the hardest experience of my life. I will say that moment from that point on until uh, about, so that was March until about November. I, 
I experienced grief like I had never known grief, right? And for me, grief is not a very talked about emotion. It's not something that, you know, we feel very safe communicating about, but it was the the most, um, wow, uh, it felt forever and it was really yeah. hard and it was, and I had no control, zero control. I just had to keep surrendering to the grief. I just had to give into the grief. I had to just let it have its voice, yeah. let it be its process. Yeah. That grief, however, as much as it was the most challenging experience, transformed me like no other thing I've ever done. No coaching, no, um, mm-hmm. like nothing in spiritual self-development, nothing changed me like surrendering to my grief, even though it took me like eight months of time to feel it, to choose it, to want it. To, to just be like, I love you, grief. And, and as it was happening for me, I could feel myself stretching and, and, and bringing in my capacity to hold a deeper level of emotion. And that's translated like into a, a different and a higher level of joy at, at the end of it. But in that moment, it was an eight month process. Where I want to just share, it's doing it it's doing you. Yes. Not you're doing it. So just want to share to people the intelligence of emotions and the intelligence of like the medicine of what is here now, not reactive, not in your head, but what the only thing with something like grief is going to wash over you so intensely. It's all you can do, which is sometimes what we need. Cause it's just like this B ain't listening. Like, and it's not like it's a punitive thing. It's just like, what will get her there faster? So like discomfort isn't something to be mamby pamby about like, Ooh, ouch, Ooh, like, don't be a little kid, like be a little kid in other ways. Don't be a little bit kid here. Like actually grow yourself up spiritually, sit in the transformational fires now that takes time. So you might need someone like me or another therapist or someone to like take you through once. Or I think you do like, you know, like you might need someone to hold your hand the first time. So, you know, you're not actually going to die because that's how you'll feel yes. the, like <sighs> the stuff it will burn off is stuff that would take it would have taken you years of like the mental processing and journaling and like all that stuff's great. But like, isn't that wonderful that you had eight months of of like just, on the other side now like no one could have sat there and told you that when you're in it that this is wonderful and that would be a dumb thing to do don't go and do that to anybody right now that's no. in that state <laughs> just don't just don't try to fix them just let them be in the grief trust their capacity trust someone else's capacity to be with discomfort rather than trying to fix them or give them the right book. If you have an inspired impulse from within, then yes, but don't rescue and fix. It's just going to feed their, I'm weak and I need fixing. The most powerful way to hold space for somebody is to see them as capable. Mm -hmm. Just saying. So yeah, no, no, no. So now I want to bring this back to it. So how did you even get into what you're doing now? Like, what is your personal story of like, you know, landing in your body and choosing an embodied life and supporting others and being in their body? Yeah. Um, so yeah, there was that car. I mean, I was like dancing in my backyard with nature singing Disney songs. So like my connection to spirit, I was raised Catholic. So I'd go and sit in this church and count how many bald heads there were. Like, I was just like, (laughs) I was in the choir loft. (laughs) So it wasn't spiritual for me. <laughs> Let's say like there it was just you should do this now. Kneel now. Sit now. Do this now. Eat this thing now. I'm only giggling too because my my church experience was Sunday school. It was how how fast can I get out of this major room to go in color with kids? <laughs> do something that actually connects you to spirit. So yes, yes. So I was just like I had a uh, God's. God, and some people may be triggered by that word, but I have a real neutral, um, it's the unnameable one. It's probably the closest to it, um, of whatever your, your path to spirit, there's many rivers to the same ocean, but my path was like, God's dumb. (laughs) There's like animals being abused. My mom's such a nice person. And she's like going through all this stuff. My brother was 
addicted to drugs and he wouldn't, if he hears this podcast back, he'll be like, well, oh, I'm not addicted to drugs because he didn't consider marijuana to be a drug, but he was doing it too much. And it made him a very like reactive person. And he was really hard to be around. So I didn't have a relationship with God, but I loved music and I loved animals and nature. And so it's interesting how I came to where I am now, where that is my path to spirit. Um, but I just always knew something was wrong. And then I thought something was wrong with me. Like, I was like, something's wrong. Oh, maybe it's me. Cause everyone seems to be okay. Like people are going to school and they're doing their thing and they're living their lives, but I'm feeling deeply like something's wrong, like my whole life. And then I wanted to be a singer. So I went to school for singing. Um, and so it doesn't work that way where you just go to school for singing and then you become Celine Dion. Like it actually doesn't work that way. So <laughs> here's your certificate. And now, <laughs> now, now you get to go. So, um, I throughout university was still very broken. Like I had lost a ton of weight, date, dated the football player guy everyone wanted and was like, had this notebook love story. And I had a record deal, like this pr publishing deal and, um, had all these friends, but I had never been more anxious. Like I'm 24 having a midlife crisis. Like, I'm just like, how do I keep it all going? I just, I, I, I was like a total fraud. Like, <laughs> what am I doing to keep up with this? Which, which allowed me to go, what, there's gotta be some other way. Like this can't be it. Like I mean, chronic anxiety of holding it all together and making sure I stay skinny and making sure this and making sure that in order for all this loveliness to be mine. So then I was like, wait, I have a music degree and rent in Toronto and no job like viable job options. <laughs> and so I had this like, whoa, a moment of wait, like maybe the desires in my head can never happen. Like maybe this, like you can have whatever you want. Isn't true. Like it just, but the magic died. And I was like, well, okay, I guess I have to, uh, you know, to use the language muggle, I guess I need to just fit in this world. Like, I guess that's it. So I became a personal trainer because it had to be hot to be a singer. And then it's like my spirit was online enough within all my brokenness, all of my human brokenness, <laughs> that I could be really charismatic, shiny chaos. Like I could get, get by. And um, it brought me to different things. So then I, I, I became personal trainer. Um, that gave me money to pay rent, which was really a good idea. <laughs> and then, um, I kept trying to sing, but it felt hard. And so that didn't feel satisfying. I did Reiki sessions in my basement. Like how many people are doing that now or still, you know, still doing that. And then my personal training clients started to transform just by hanging out with me. Like literally like not just body, just like this one woman, young woman, it was 18. Her dad came in Italian man crying of like, oh my God, my daughter's back. Like, like deep transformation was happening. So I decided to become a therapist. So then I was at a uh, sports supplement demo, demo at a sports store, which is so funny. Cause I grew up overweight and like chronic pain. Like, so being like this athlete, I'm like a, <laughs> the poster girl for things was just strange, but I was really good at it. And so I walked down the street and transformational arts college was literally down the street to check out their training program that was starting. What I found out was in two weeks, joined that needed the money from my dad. Cause like personal training and Reiki sessions in your basement aren't that lucrative at the time. <laughs> so, um, then I did psychotherapy training and that was so helpful on the humanness level in so many ways. So I'm 26 learning about subpersonalities. Like I was like, who am I if I'm not a perfectionist and the pillar of strength? I was like, I, I don't, what? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you know, so like the, the process of becoming a therapist was exactly what I needed. And once I was spit out the other side of that, meaning like I did have the capacity to help people and guide them, but I still knew I had more work to do. Like I still knew. And when I say work to do, I mean, I was still more reactive than being like, I, I knew I was still having like addictive personality things with eating and like 
worthiness issues and, and and just my inner child just needed a lot more work than what that had done for me. So, um, and then the other thing I noticed was clients would come back with the same problem just in different ways. So like no one was moving past to the other side. So that led me to, um, it's all random. Like all of everything that came to me, came to me. It wasn't like I'm going out to it. So this coach training when I was 29 came through a music agent because I was going to try the music thing again. And he was in California and this was when Skype was a thing. And so I'm like all nervous. Like, how do I do Skype? Oh my God. <laughs> like, who am I talking to? So I go on Skype and I'm feeling so incredibly vulnerable and nervous. And he invites me into his coach training. That's going to be for the, the rest of the year. And at this point, my intuition, it's like such a long story, but my intuition had already had me quit my job, leave my apartment and move back to Godridge, my hometown from Toronto. And I thought I was going to start my own business. Spirit's like, nope, we're clearing the deck so that you can do this training that you don't know is happening yet. But I had this temper tantrum with God, like you wouldn't even imagine. I'm just like doing everything right. What am I supposed to do? I was really, really annoyed. And, um, when I met this mentor, it was really when the tire hit the road on a business model, a business model of online fits my personality. I like to have my own time freedom. I'm a very creative person. And I believe what you want wants you. Like I believe success doesn't have to require a lot of contortion, like true authentic success. So um, when he's like, hey, do this training. And then he let me start the training without having any money. Like he's like, pay me when you start making money, which is like, I don't think anyone else does that. <laughs> so like he had already started the training. And so here I am. And I could have said, no, I could have said, no, I'm not going to do this. But I said, yes. And that was ontology is um, how you relate to reality creates reality. And so it isn't about moving the pieces outside of you. It isn't about looking in the mirror, seeing a smudge on your face and trying to get it off of the mirror. It's actually, you have to get it off your face. <laughs> like, oh, there it is. Um, so it's all about how we relate to reality creates a reality. So we have to get at those core pieces, those, those fundamental pieces that are creating this experience. And so when we went through that process, I did ACOA, I did um, adult children of alcoholics recovery, because most people that want to help people need, need help. <laughs> they, 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 healers typically need to do some healing on themselves. And this was a human, very humanness, growing up your inner child, creating a strong adult. Like I remember reading it and being so triggered and so like, not wanting to go, I would get nauseous before meetings. I would, I would, my like inner, my resistance would just like, I'd go to go to a meeting and just be like freaking the F out. Just like every part of me didn't want to go because it was powerful. And that's when you can start to use resistance as an indicator of power on the other side. Um, but the ontological coach training program is super transformational for me because it was like, I am in the driver's seat. I'm in the driver's seat. And all the while, I also had a shaman mentor that I met. So like I was doing the mind stuff, the human stuff, but I was also doing the spirit stuff. So I had my Reiki mentor. Then I had a shaman mentor. And he, again, came to me at a music festival. I'm going to put your spirit in your body. He didn't say I'm going to put your spirit in your body, but ended up having this experience where he helped put my spirit fully back into my body because spirit told him to. Um, no money transaction. So like a lot of my teachers have been like old, old school. I'm going to be your teacher now. And then, you know, money would work itself out, but shamanism was about now back to like music and nature and like how I always related to spirit and how spirit really related to me. And then realized that is God, <laughs> you know, God can come through this, this or the other thing. So then I was just like, well, Am I an ontological coach? Am I a Reiki practitioner? Am I a psychotherapist? Like, what am I? So from 29 to 30, I was, no, 29, that's one year. I finished my training. Um, from 30 to 40s, which is now, I was like, what's my method? Like, what's me figuring out, watching what works, watching humans, seeing the common denominators? And like, we really have to turn self-development on its head because nothing's wrong with you. 
And okay, so but I have a question for you real quick. Cause you kept saying I was broken and I was like, I don't know how I feel about that word, Jenna. And you said it like multiple times. And I was that like, was how I felt. that's how you felt. But like, I don't want any of the listeners associate, like, cause I was like, because we're not broken in, in, in a, like our true self isn't broken. So I was just, I wanted to like, say like, what was your relationship with that word? Because you had brought it up. Um, the, that society is broken. Gotcha. Society is ill. So when I said, I felt like something was wrong with me, it's because when I looked at what people were saying success looked like, <laughs> do, 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 do this, do that, do that. Um, wear this hairstyle, like keeping up with the Joneses. Um, I just didn't fit into that. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do what I want. Like, you know, so it's finding that place where no one's broken, nothing's wrong. So the wholeness and, and healing doesn't mean fixing healing means wholeness. So like to arrive at the truth of your wholeness is more what I'm trying to say. Like I, I felt broken. <laughs> I oh, am wrong. I mean, there have been times I have I, felt broken yeah. as well. Like, yeah. So I felt like something was so deeply wrong with me that if people left me, that makes sense. That if things don't work out, that makes sense. But that's shame again. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make it clear that like going through what life brought to me as the transformational options, as the mentors, as the, as the things that came on my path that I didn't go crazy seeking them. They mm -hmm. literally came to me. I had an idea, a mentor would show up, a book would present itself. So I never did the scramble, scramble thing for too long with too many things. I did that with fitness a lot with like losing weight and be like scrambly. Yeah, me too. But is that not what our inner critics ammunition is for both of us? I think totally, totally. It's that's it's the it's one gotta, thing that yeah. still she's got the ruler and she's like, whack. <laughs> like yeah. you get you ate ice cream last night, you are going to gain 10 pounds. I'm like, yeah, what? No, I'm not. I'm a hot. It's like now. physically impossible. Why are you even saying that? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so that's like the so I feel like society has, has grown from these ideas of success that inherently are broken because they require you to contort and they require you to dye your hair blonde or dye your hair this. Now, I, now that you come to the other side of it, you can be a creator and not a reactor. And I'd be like, I feel like being blonde and that's going to feel cool. And I, I want to from, from my lantern being fully turned on and up my expression is expressing this, not, oh, I'll be cool if. And, so then, yeah. yeah, I love this. So then talk from the perspective of like, you have done it. Like that is like, for those listening, like I really want you to hear, this was not a one-year process. Like my process <laughs> was in one year or I did this one thing and I was just fine on the other side. Like, and, and it's, and, and I ebb and flow, right? Like there's times where I'm very outward energy and I feel very bright and everything feels easy and everything's like whatever. But then there's times I have to contract. And I know that those contractions, as I become more aware, the first contraction will feel like this is where I'm. But this you're is backtracking. Yes. Right. And, and I don't, I see the contraction now as creating space to then, expand back out again right and so your story gave many many layers right like of how you were processing and moving through and becoming more and more embodied and human through everything that you were doing yeah right? with those billows of I had so many ecstatic moments in that that I, I kind of like plowed through to just get the content out but like when I did my ontological coach training I was on top of the freaking world I'm like Ooh, I figured that out. Like, I was just so enthusiastic. So like, oh wait, nothing's wrong with me. I'd wake up and not need to fix anything or not to like, yes. it was like delusionally, like the biggest high you'll ever have just being myself. Yes. Yes. So, so those I want to, because like, I want people to understand, like coming to the end of the thing that they, like, when you get to, cause you were talking to the point of this, like when you're like in these moments where you recognize that you are the creator, right? Like that you get to turn the lantern up, that that's your decision. Like that's your choice. And I will share this from the level. Always here. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, my husband always cleans the podcast and I always throw him into it. And like, even this morning, I was like, you know, honey, like it didn't matter. It doesn't matter where we live or the different like jobs that you've had. Like there always is something that isn't quite right. But what if that not quite right isn't meant to be found outside? What if it is meant to kind of for you to discover what it, that feeling is that's making it seem like everything's not quite right? Yeah. And he was like, oh, right. Like that moment of like, huh, interesting. If the common denominator denominator is me in all of these experiences, like, you know, how do, how, if, okay, so from the level of my husband. But that's like, very ontological like that. So that, you know, cause it's such a big word. People are like, what? what is, I don't think I knew what it meant for six months while I was doing the, I don't know if I know what it means right now, <laughs> but the, to, to his relationship to reality is creating its reality. So oh, something's not right. Okay. Oh, something's not right. Oh, something's not right. And it's like, in order for him to change the not rightness that keeps presenting, this is now the opportunity of seeing that as a mirror. I don't believe in seeing everything as meaning something by the way. Cause I think that's, that's, that's just going down a hole, but this case it's insistent, consistent, persistent. And it's, and it's like something that wants to be looked at. Yes. Yes. So if you were to, to give somebody who's listening right now a piece of advice, right? Like they're, they're, they're like, I'm, I don't, I, I'm not sure if I want to be in my humanness, right? Or I feel like there's still so much work to do and it's going to take me forever to get there. And my dream is, you know, so far away. And how do I take this first step? And how do I, you know, believe in myself or, or feel like this is possible for me? Because these are all way, these are things I've, that I felt in my, my journey to get here. And I'm sure you have felt all of those too. So what is your like biggest, like, kind of like start here? This is, this is the place that you're going to begin to, to shift. And again, remembering that we are on a journey, you guys, this is something that we go on for as long as it, I say forever life. Mm -hmm. well, I'm, not, I'm I'm on this. This is my life journey, and I'm in it for all the bumps yeah. and all of the highlights, the whole the whole experience. But what I'm would you give the person now. who's like, please, Jenna? Yeah. <laughs> so okay, I'm gonna answer everything you said. I had a I had a reaction to in terms of a response. So I want to say you need to be here to get there. Mm -hmm. So if you're wondering what to do, you need to be here to get there. The you now is going to have access to what you need to do now. The you there is going to have access to what they need to do then. And you're going to have no freaking clue. And isn't that wonderful that you just need to do what's in front of you? Mm. So, so simple, but not easy. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> you're not running out of time. They, so the time thing is what creates squirrely, squirrely mind. I have time. I have time because my job is to be me and to be here. If my job is to be me and be here, now what? Like write that down. And then in train with that, um, we transform when we, when we activate our resources, we tune in, we, we come into our body more. We feel the sensations of the body. We listen to the body. We participate with the body. So everything's a relationship. That's also very ontological. It's all a relationship. My body, the heart space, the emotions heal you. Your mind isn't where you digest emotions. That's like trying to digest your lunch in your brain. You just won't, <laughs> but we try. So ruminating all that kind of stuff isn't going to actually digest the emotions. Your body's going to digest emotions. So, so start to create a relationship with emotion that isn't one of running the other way. Sit and be and feel and develop a new relationship. Just like you would buy a plant, you'd water it. Like you create this relationship with your body. So come here now, feel your body and let it guide you. And I also always recommend journaling. Yeah, you're big with journaling. So be where you are now. Oh, I can't really feel my body. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm. wherever you are now, I'm vibrating above my body is fine because the only, your only job is to go to the next step. So that's the thing. And everything, um, you know, when I read the quote, God doesn't 
call the qualified. He call no, God doesn't call them. He qualifies the called. So everything you need to be you, like a seed, is all here. So I feel like what I, who I'm talking to is like me in my 20s. Like, <laughs> like we want, we're hungry for all the things, but we have to learn how to get present. So the human part of you needs to be trained like a little kid, like, nope, we're gonna, we're gonna do this right now. Um, and, and from that maturity, you're gonna experience self-trust and safety. And that self-trust and safety is really worth working with. And so feeling emotions, letting them move, letting them move. And as you said, like they will move through faster and faster. You can move through creating that new relationship to emotions is going to then clear off your receivers to more and more guidance. So what I was getting at is that this creates compound interest. So your fear of what it took me so long to get from here to here, gosh, it's going to take me even longer to get from here to here. No, you're, you're going to experience spiritual compound interest. You're going to actually have this exponential thing happen because what you want wants you. So your, all of your resources are going to come online to start working with you for you. So there's what you're doing here and now, and then there's all of these things working with you for you on multiple layers. And so as we start participating with them, we can start to feel that more in our real, real world. I love spiritual image there. What you want wants you. Do, do, do. And, that's what it is. <laughs> like, and I want you all to hear that. Take mental note of that. I love that it happened at that exact moment. I know, it, came, it came up when I was like, <laughs> shh. <laughs> no, it was perfect. It was perfect. It was almost like it was like shining a light on that. And so like, I'm going to say I'm lucky to have someone like you in my relate like in my relationship because sometimes we do we are humans experiencing a human world and and even when you're like don't overthink things you have humans in your world that are like yo you're you're making more out of this than what it is you don't have to find that like this isn't something to be. it just is it just is so I appreciate that I've got a Jenna in my life and when you tune yourself to allow yourself to have people like this spirit will guide you know, yes. the right humans in for you to grow and expand in the ways that you want to as well. And if you are also looking for a Jenna in your life, like if you're like, oh, I want Jenna in my life. I want somebody to walk me through the fire, like so that I, I've got a handhold and I can learn these, these um, mechanisms and these ways in which to be here now, because it is, it's a process to, to, to really be here now. Like it's not necessarily something that is known to you like it's not familiar to you and if you're like I want to know what that feels like Jenna where would people go to learn more to tune into your frequency to be like yes I would like to walk this path with Jenna yeah to get direct access would be my website Jenna Smith coaching.com which I'm sure you'll probably have under there I will Look in the um, and then it's a, you can book a 20 minute chat with me there and there are some articles on there um but yeah, you know, like people that want to reach out to me already know, like, it's so fascinating. I've run my entire business. We talk about spiritual business. My entire business has been me being me is the magnet to the right people at the right time. Like my people know who they are. They know I'm their person and they know it's time. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's been my entire vibrational sales model of how things go. So yeah, you'll find me. Um, and then more will be on Instagram around the book. So there will be a book coming out in June with all of the things, all of this stuff in a book, which is why it's taken so long. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I love you. And this was so impactful and so helpful, like choosing to be human, like choosing our humanness, like being that as the catalyst for, for life to be you know, just a big, giant, juicy surprise of awesomeness. <laughs> All or suckiness on that one day. Yeah, it's like it'll it'll yeah. pass. It's just yeah. a weather pattern. Like, don't take it so personally. Yes. Oh, I love that. Um, thank okay. you. Thanks.
I love you. And I am so excited. And Jen and I have actually talked about maybe having a little mini podcast of our own. And if you listen to this and you're like, oh yeah, that would be a good idea. Tag us, comment, let us know if you're like more Jenna and Avalon conversations, because that would be very helpful for us to know if that's something that, you know, you guys are looking forward to. So put that in the comments. If you've made it this far, we would love to hear your thoughts. And anything last minute, Jenna, you have to say? No? Perfect. I will see you all next time on the Cosmic Day podcast.